Here we'll consider some Genexus objects that prove useful of the time of encapsulating functionalities and organizing objects in our knowledge base. To start with, let's consider modules. Modules are Genexus objects acting as containers that allow us to group objects from our KB, making it easier to understand and to maintain the KB, as well as to integrate objects with other KBs. When we create a knowledge base, the root module is then created and, by default, all the objects we create remain in that module. Modules and folders aid us in organizing objects. However, there are conceptual differences between modules and folders. Modules help in encapsulating and modularizing parts of the KB, with the possibility of determining which objects are visible from other objects and which are not, as we'll see later. Folders, on the other hand, act as containers that only help in organizing objects by separating them according to specific criteria. Along with modules, they create a hierarchical tree where the root is always a module as in the case of the root module. We can see this in KB Explorer. Modules may have module children, but folders may not have modules as their children. As a general rule, we could say that it's possible to use modules to encapsulate and folders for organizing objects within the module. In order to add an object to a module, we could drag it to the module in KB Explorer, or otherwise right-click on the module and then New Object, or otherwise change the value of the object's module folder property. Packed modules that have been shared with us may be viewed through the menu, Knowledge Manager, Manage Module References. For each module available, we can see its information to decide whether we will install it in our KB or not. If we do, it'll be saved under the References node of KB Explorer, as opposed to objects we create, which are saved in the root module by default. We cannot modify the objects of these modules. We view them as read-only, which are already compiled. So, when we press F5, it's not necessary to specify or generate them, and so on. However, we will be able to use them freely from the objects in our application, using all the functionalities they have available. Any member of the community may create, share, or even sell his or her modules through Marketplace. One of these is the Genexus module, also known as Genexus Core. The Genexus module is distributed automatically and installed in all KBs, and as any external mode of our application, we'll find it in the References node. It comprises a series of submodules that contain a set of APIs with their corresponding domains and SDTs, which enable us to interact with the various technologies, devices, sensors, applications, and so on. These APIs are implemented as external objects, which we'll see next. You can find further information on the module object at this wiki link. Now let's see what external objects are. External objects are Genexus objects that enable us access to external resources of our KB, as if they were another object in the KB. That's why they're increasingly more frequent and important in our web and mobile device applications. Let's now see how to use them. We may import different types of resources into our KB. For instance, when we have something programmed in .NET, we may generate a DLL and import it into the KB as an external object. Then, from our app, we may invoke the functions included in the DLL as if there were procedures programmed in Genexus. The same happens with classes created in Java. We may also import resources stores in other external sources, like Java Beans programs, or procedures stored in a database. Web services, both SOAP and REST, SAP modules, JSON files generated by any application, or XML schema. Genexus also provides a set of external objects that are located in the root module, or in the Genexus module that enables us access to a variety of resources, such as APIs for interacting with the hardware, or native applications of mobile devices, or APIs to have access to the server, to events, or to Windows applications such as the Notepad 
as well as to external sites for using maps and social networks, among other things. There are also external objects published on the Genexus marketplace that we may include in our application. The best way to create an external object is to use a wizard. If we go to the Tools menu and select Application Integration, we'll see the various resources to be imported, and a specific wizard will be executed for that resource. Upon finalizing the wizard, the external object created will be automatically associated with the resource. All the properties of the external object will be adjusted in accordance with the type or resources that have been imported. We may also create an external object with new object, just like with any other Genexus object, although in that case, we will need to set up its properties, methods, and events manually. Once we've created the external object based on the properties that correspond to the external object that we wish to use, it'll be available just like any other data type in the knowledge base. We use it in the same way as any other type of extended data, by defining a variable of that type, and then calling the methods and or setting up the properties that we need. Another thing we can do with external objects is interact with JavaScript. For example, to link events implemented in an external JavaScript to a Genexus event. Let's see this with a sample application. Note that when we scroll in the application, the top bar gets smaller. This is implemented with a JavaScript change on scroll event programmed externally. Let's see how to link this JavaScript to Genexus. The JavaScript we have is very simple. Basically, when a certain scroll height has been reached, it triggers a shrink event. Otherwise, it triggers an expand event. How do we link this JavaScript to Genexus? We do this with an external object called changeOnScroll, which is basically associated with an external JavaScript called changeOnScroll, and here are the events this JavaScript is triggering. In this case, they have the same name as in the JavaScript, but we could change it. These events were implemented in the webmaster panel, or master page, where the external object change on scroll is included with the scroll to expand event and the scroll to shrink event. In one case, we're hiding the component, and in the other case, we're showing it, since basically we want it to be displayed or hidden depending on how far down the scroll bar is. To include the JavaScript in the application, we're doing it the same way we've always done it, which is to add the script to the HTML code. For more information about external objects, visit the following link displayed on screen.